All right, it is Friday morning. This is Hardwood Green, presented by Full Press Coverage. I'm your host, Evan Singleton. All right, so you're going to notice right off the bat that this uh, this episode is by no means as good as of quality as, as our, our past episodes have been, our past two episodes. Why is that? Because I have struggled to get this podcast out there, struggled to do really anything um, lately, just, uh, just, just based on how much I'm traveling. And uh, yeah, so it's a little tough right now. I'm podcasting from, and you're going to hear noises going around, going around, um, <laughs> going around all over. And uh, you might hear some background noise and stuff, so uh, bear with me here. But we do have a podcast to get to, and uh, whether it's short or long, who knows? Depends on um, if I can string this one together based on you know <laughs> my surroundings. But I, again, I'm traveling, so so sorry the Twitter hasn't been active. Sorry I haven't even been active on my personal Twitter. It's been a little tough uh, just just traveling around the globe here, and I'm podcasting now from my phone from an undisclosed location. Um, no guest. Just me, just me talking, and the first thing we're going to get to is Kyrie Irving. And this is going to be, uh, I guess it's going to be a little segment that I'm going to start with just trying to uh, to get the hot take out there right at the beginning of the podcast. And that's that I believe Kyrie Irving's not coming back. I believe he is out for season. And why is that? Well, I just think that without him, the Celtics are going to... Gonna, uh, not be relevant whatsoever, right? Like that's not no that's no breaking news. He's he's their best player. So without him, I don't think that they're going to make any sort of wave or any sort of push in the playoffs, right? Excuse me as I take a sip of my morning gel. Um so without him, they're not making any sort of push in the playoffs. So why would he come back if it doesn't look promising in the playoffs? Does that make sense? So if if they're not if they're not looking like, okay, we could really use Kyrie right now, then he, he's not going to come back. You know, if, if, if it's a situation of, geez, we need Kyrie to save us, then he's not going to come back. Does that make sense? You know, he's not going to, he's not going to come back and push his knee to the limits after a surgery just to try and hopefully save this team when they have not, and then in, in, him included, with haven't shown that they can really, you know, hang with the best lately you get okay that's probably harsh that's probably harsh because they are one of the better teams in the league but they're not as good as that 16 streak win period or you know when they when they beat the warriors that time or beat the rockets you know what i mean they, they've kind of died off they've kind of shown that okay well Jalen brown's not going to put up 30 um you know these guys off the bench aren't going to be ridiculous aaron baines is aaron baines like so that that's that's how we're starting this episode off we're starting it off on a negative note i guess and it's just that don't don't really be surprised if, if if Kyrie Irving decides to and you know what it might be rightfully so it might be best that he decides to okay you know what I'll give my knee a rest for the playoffs and I'll come back strong next year with Gordon Hayward and build up that drama that would be awesome that really would so don't be surprised if Kyrie Irving just you know doesn't come back it's not like it's the end of the world it's this wasn't the year they're going to win the championship it's not like if Cleveland solely relying on LeBron and LeBron went down it's not the same thing. No, these guys are young. Harry Irving himself is young. What I do want to address is... Oh, it was a big, big thing. Just drove on by here. What I do want to address is that I don't believe this is the same, like, knee surgery that was being threatened in Cleveland. Do you remember they were, like, they leaked... We had to trade Kyrie Irving. He wanted to trade. He said if we didn't trade him, he would threaten to get season-ending knee surgery. Well little weird right because this surgery is only what three to six weeks we're removing that tension wire that was supposed to be helping him so why now would they have said earlier that he would get surgery a necessary surgery it wouldn't just a makeup surgery clearly that would be uh that would be season ending at the beginning of the year so i'm kind of thinking i'm wondering if they're tied together i don't think they are i think that that was cleveland just you know shoving stuff out of their mouth spitting spitting on nonsense um, but yeah, so uh, you know, let me tie in Marcus Smart to this too. Same thing. If they're not going to make a legitimate push, Marcus Smart's not going to come back if he's not 100%. He's not going to get paid this off season, but he's going to be looking for he's going to be looking for some money in a couple of years. So he's not going to come back unless he can truly, truly show that he's you know worth I don't know 20 million dollars. And him coming back with a bum hand, he's not going to be able to do his thing. He really isn't. Um, so hopefully he's uh, when he does choose to come back, he's 100%. But I would also say 
you know that torn tendon that's no that's no joke i wouldn't be surprised if he's if he's out for a while it's all based on on whether or not they feel like they can help the team or make a push right if these guys aren't going to come back until it looks like they only have a couple games left, it's not like they're ready right now and taking a couple, taking a month off before the playoffs type of thing. No, it's it's at any when these guys are projected to come back at any time, this team's it could be their last game. So why wouldn't you say, all right, you know what? I know I should be playing, but let's save some in the tank. Makes sense. You know, it's like Gordon Hayward. Everyone was talking at the beginning of the year, he'll be back in April. That's how long this takes to, to heal. Right, it takes that long to heal, but is he ready to step onto an NBA playoff game floor? No chance. No chance. He's able and healed to be resuming playoff, I mean, playoff basketball activity soon. That's a way different story. You know, they're saying, oh, well, he'll be back to playing. Yeah, not not with a Celtics jersey on and against the the Cavs in a playoff series. Like, come on, it would be pretty cool if uh, if Hayward re return was against the Cavs. You know, that'd be that'd be nice. I'd love to see him them complete that play. Everyone's saying that Gordon Hayward's gonna have the yips for the rest of his career about jumping. I'd love to see the first play he comes in. They run that same play. He dunks it on uh, on uh, I guess it was Jay Crowder that underclipped him, but someone else in the Cavs that can replace Jay Crowder. Oh no, Jay Crowder's irreplaceable. No, um, getting carried away here. But yeah, first segment there, Kyrie Irving out for a year. You heard it here first. All right, let's move on to a a better topic, a uh, more more inspiring and and um, good Celtics topic, positive. Um, early in the morning, you know, let's get those positive vibes going. And uh, you know, one thing I didn't say is that I'm pretty much podcasting in public right now, and people are looking at me like I'm talking to a. Like I'm talking to myself. I'm acting like I'm trying to talk on the phone. Um, but, you know, I'm moving the phone away and talking with my hands a little bit. So they're looking at me like, dude, why are you talking so much Celtics? Um, and I actually had to pause the podcast because someone came over and started talking to me about the Celtics. And I asked him, hey, do you want to just be on the podcast? And he immediately shut up and got really nervous and was like, no. So I was very confused there. But, um, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> this all isn't just one take. I don't know what you all think. But uh, let's get back to the positive um, topic we're going to talk about, and that's Al Horford. I know maybe week one of this podcast, or or week two, kind of uh, kind of kind of shit on Al Horford for not not doing what he used to do, right? Not doing what he <clears throat> or or not I shouldn't say used to, not doing what he's supposed to do. All these like tertiary categories that he fills up the stat sheet, all those good things that he does, right? All these um uh, you know these these I can't think of the word I guess I guess all these you know circular that's definitely not the word uh, people are just staring at me now that I'm spewing knowledge but anyways all these all these all these um, surrounding surrounding statue categories that that he kind of fills up and that he's able to to make himself a five-time all-star doing right well <clears throat> he hasn't been doing them in fact he's been like injured he's been doing really nothing like he's not doing the best in fact, I think he's gained a lot more hate this season. However, guess what? It's playoff time soon. And do you remember what Al Horford did in the playoffs? I can't really be mad at Al Horford's contract because of last playoffs. I think he literally earned his entire max deal last playoffs, and I think he'll do it again. I think he knows when to rise to the occasion. His playoff numbers in his career are actually uh, fairly good. Obviously not a large sample size, but they are pretty good. And uh, one thing that I would say about the fact that uh, when people complain about salaries and whatnot, it's not your money. Like, I'm not going to sit here and say I can't believe they're paying them that much. It's not your money. Like, think about it. It hasn't stopped them from doing anything else, right? If that was the case, if they couldn't have signed Gordon Hayward, or if there was no chance they can sign Kyrie coming back because Al Horford, then you got yourself a problem. But, like, you got in the NBA, you just take the best available. What was it? Him or Kevin Durant? There's no other option. Kevin Durant, obviously, they would have wanted him. But there was no other option. You know, you're not going to. Every team was going to give Al Horford a max contract. OKC, Washington. I think the Hawks wanted him back. So, you see there, like. You can't complain about the money unless it prevents you from doing something, unless it hinders you and, 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 and stops you in some other way, which it really hasn't, and I don't know if it will. So don't don't talk about Al Horford's money. However, the one thing I said about his money is that I think he made himself worth it. 
in that uh, you can say he's not worth the money. Sure, that's fine. But when you get mad about the contract and you can't believe they're paying him this much, like you got to take a chill pill. You got to realize it's not your money. You got to realize that it's pretty much monopoly money. Like it's not stopping them from doing anything. They're just paying him because they needed him, and he has made this team so much better. But um, you know, I have I did say that he made himself worth it in the playoffs, and he did. I think I think him doing what he did in the playoffs, carrying the load for the team, especially when IT went down, and we'll get to him in a little bit, I think it made him worth his contract. I think it showed people, okay, well, you know what, when times are tough, when times, when we need him, he's good, and now your response is going to be, yeah, well, what about when, like, Kyrie and Jalen and Marcus Smart, they're all out, and, like, then Al Horford can't even step up, and Gordon Hayward, no, realize, these these games against the Mavericks, per se, without Kyrie or Jalen, that type of thing, that's not a big moment, no one gives a shit about those games, it's going to be when they're playing in the playoffs against the Pacers or the Cavs or the Heat, when maybe those guys aren't in there, Al Horford will step up. You can count on him for doing to do that because he is this veteran. He is a guy that just steps up when he needs to. He should be stepping up in those miscellaneous games without these guys, but he doesn't need to. You don't want to get those two confused whatsoever. You don't want to be thinking Al Horford needs to step up this game when it's a, a Tuesday night against Milwaukee. You know, it's not a, it's not a must win. None of these games are must wins. Their playoff spot in my mind is pretty set. I think these playoffs, unless the, I think five through eight could move around, but I really think four through one is um, fairly set. I, I do know that things could move, but it looks to me like those those playoff spots are, are, are set thus far. So stepping away a little bit from the Celtics, I want to talk about Isaiah Thomas. It's sad because he was the guy here last year. He was the guy, he could do anything made all of us, uh, shout out to five nine guys out there, including myself, he gave all of us hope in the fact that we could do things remarkable, and uh, you know, he's having surgery, I think he's going to be out four more months or something, he can't heal, that's that's tough, um, I think I had said it when he got the original surgery that he won't be the same come back from the surgery, I think he'll still be good, he'll still be a scorer, but he's not going to be a, a dominant player, which he was last year, he was dominant for that season. Um, I don't know if he could have ever, um, you know, replicated it, but he was dominant. You can't really deny that. He almost dropped 30 points a game, had a 50-point game in the playoffs. Isaiah Thomas dominated last year. It is sad to see him go. Now he's bouncing around from team to team. All the hate that he was getting unnecessarily is is somewhat being verified now and, and um, you know, validated, and it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty stupid because... This guy did so much for Boston. He brought this team back to where it needed to be. Gordon Hayward wouldn't be here without Isaiah Thomas. Who knows if Al Horford would be. It's it it's it sucks for me to see a guy that I followed since college. Again, just 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 repping the five nine badge. You know. I, I I've and, and when I did when I did interview him, he well, I didn't think he was shorter than five nine, because I was like, you know, couple inches taller than him but anyways five nine on the statue on the uh on the scorecard but uh yeah so it, it was man it, it was tough seeing seeing him go down it was seeing him go down the first time seeing him go down again and i think you can even probably tell in my voice the 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 disappointment of just how the league has worked out now for him you know um it's his fault but it's not um the celtics could have some blame there you know they kept playing him when he was hurt he could have just kept he could have opened his mouth, and a rather big mouth it is, and said, hey, I can't play, like, I don't want to keep injuring this to the Celtics, and they wouldn't have played him, but, um, yeah, this is, so instead of, like, what I'm sure a lot of podcasts, and a lot of articles are talking about, like, oh, Isaiah Thomas sucks, see, this is more of a, like, I, I feel you, Isaiah, um, I feel you, I think that what, what happened is, is, is sucky, you know, you went from a good situation to a bad situation to a worse, and now he's probably just getting the hip surgery to, like, to, 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 to take a step back, try and fix something if it wasn't fully fixed, and uh, it just, it sucks for him because Isaiah Thomas was on, was on pace to start getting his name really known around the league, you know, and uh, you could say it was a product of the system, well, Tom Brady's a product of the system, and I don't, ta- I don't hate the Patriots or Tom Brady any, any, any little bit, you know, they're still my favorite team, he's still my, one of my favorite football players, so Isaiah Thomas, man, I hate, I hate to see it happen to you. I really do. But, um, yeah, we're ending this podcast on a sad note.
because Isaiah Thomas is one of my favorite players, you know, in the in the recent years. Followed him since college, ever since the dunk contest where he dunked over a seven footer. Go check out the video. I probably have it on my Twitter somewhere. Isaiah Thomas, I hope you get a speedy recovery there, and uh, hope you come back and come back to kill the Celtics. I'd love to see that. So, uh, guys, sorry about the uh, length of this episode. We got into Kyrie Irving. We got into Al Horford a little bit, Isaiah Thomas, but again, been traveling. Got to go to a meeting right now. It's 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 a tough schedule. Starting April, I believe, what's Monday, April 2nd, that's when I'll be back in the bean, and I'll be able to get back on a normal schedule, covering games, uh, doing the podcast, Hardwood Green, and so, you know, follow me on Twitter at EvGuyBoston, E-V-G-U-Y-B-O-S-T-O-N, EvGuyBoston, and Hardwood Green on Twitter, Hardwood Green, and uh, always keep checking my content and keep checking all the other content, whether it's NFL, NHL, NBA, you name it, MLB, on uh, fullpresscoverage.com. I'll see you guys next week, and again, one last apology for the the quickie episode.